Hey guys, so today we're speaking to Jennifer Beck, who is a, um, a hypnotherapist in Hamilton, specializing in weight loss and anxiety and, and lots of different things. So Jen, what, what we're doing today is we're going to be talking to hypnotherapists that are starting out and they're coming down the training, just basically on like top tips and just things that really got you to get to where you are so quickly and you are working full time and you've done this in, a, in, a, in an amazing amount, you know, a quick amount of time. So I'll get you first to just talk about you and how you got into it and why you got into it, kind of what you do, and then we'll go from there and you can share some kind of pointers and things like that for, for students and people starting out. Sure. Well, fancy seeing you again virtually yeah. on screen. Hi, Justin. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, I just want to say um, before I kick off is – to all the new people, I think it's really important. It's such an awesome profession and it's really nice that people can start looking at this as um, a way forward to help so many people because we do make a difference, eh? It's really Yeah, neat. yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do. So as for me, as how I started, well, interesting enough, I actually had a gastric band many, many years ago and unfortunately for me, I think I was too aware of so many other people in the room and whether it was the pre-talk, I didn't have the buy-in, I don't know what it was, but it didn't actually resonate that well with me. And it was a virtual band? Yeah, it was. And then I had, um, um, but then of course my little business mind started to kick in and I was like, oh gee, this could be quite lucrative, you know, because there was a lot of people in the room and I, and, um, I thought, oh, I could probably put my own stamp on that. So hence coming to you and I, and I got trained and then of course ended up training in the advanced. Um, but for me coming to Hamilton, I didn't know anybody down here. Uh, I came here with basically no client base, nothing at all. And um, so once I got trained, I had my business cards, I had my name and I was all excited like everybody does, you know, getting ready to get out there in the big wide world. And, um, you know, initially, you wonder where your clients are going to come from. So I started doing the Facebook advertising like everybody suggested to do, and I didn't get much from that. Then I started doing um, Google Ads and, yeah, got a few from that trickling through, and it was great. And then um, I already had a website going going quite great, well, you know, you had little links coming through. But people yes, already, I remember on the advanced training, you already had your business cards made, I think. Yep, I had my yeah, business You were totally card. sorted before even coming to the advance. It was all like done. Yeah, I know. I had my cool. business cards. I had my company name. And I was just, I, I don't know, I just had this real inner belief that this was my path. And, yeah. you know, you really come into your own when you get a little bit more experienced. And I've been doing this now for quite a long time, running a full-time practice. Um, but to basically go from no clients to where you are now, it's, it's, it's just really beautiful to be able to see the positive changes you make. But to be able to get those clients, that's always quite concerning. It's worrying because especially when you go and you take on a lease, you're paying a monthly lease, you don't know where that money's going to come from. So I started doing a bit of a referral basis. And this is kind of like a little um, a tip for some of the new people coming through. If somebody came to me, um, and I'd always do packages, I would never actually do just single sessions. So even if they came and it was a single session, I'd turn it into three. But I would never do three individual amounts. I'd always just say, oh, look, you know, how about we do it for X, Y, Z? And then they'd come. And um, when they finished, then I would say to them, if you referred me to two clients, I'll give you a top up. And I think that was quite important for me because it generated a lot of business because when people are on track and they're doing really, really well, they don't want to go off track. So, of course, they told many people about how well they were doing. And, of course, that generated more business. And then, of course, they'd come and get a top up. And then, of course, you kept that going. I mean, obviously, I don't do that now because I just don't have the capacity. Yeah, but it was a good way of starting. And then, of course, they became my little marketers. So they yeah, are yeah. They're marketing for me, which was really yeah, neat. Yeah, yeah. I'm really That's grateful awesome for that. Time. Yeah, no, it was cool. It was cool. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and with regards to payment, um, I'd always make sure that they paid up front. So, of course, there was a two sort of a two step approach to that, because if they paid up front, when you pay something, you want something in return. Yeah. So they were committed. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And that was another way of getting the buy-in from them because they were already committed. So, of course, it made um, our pairing so much better. Yeah, yeah. And so when you started out, you went straight into a, a clinic, getting a lease and getting into a space. Did you work online or from home first or just move straight into the let's go into the clinic? I think initially I, I started seeing a couple of people at home, but it wasn't suitable having people come to your home environment, you know, because um, I just didn't feel it didn't feel right for me it just didn't feel like I had that professional aspect um only because the living circumstances that I had at the time too wasn't exactly favorable you know I yeah, had yeah. um lawn mowers and all sorts of things around me that were going and of course now sounds not an issue but then it was because I had a lawn mowing business at, <laughs> next door to me so yeah 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 and so when you how did you feel when you first went out and got that lease and and made it quite official because then the pressure's on to actually be able to pay for everything. How did you how did you get to that step? Like what what was it that drove you to actually get out and, and do it? And I know your passion and, and your business mind, like your mind works there anyway, but for some people actually getting in and making that step and committing to it is quite a big quite Yeah, a big I job. think I think um, it does come down to what we encourage our clients is just to believe in yourself, um, yeah. believe in the process and it, it, it will actually happen for you. I was fortunate enough that um, the clinic rooms that I'm in, I'm still in the same ones and there were um, counsellors and I share it with psychologists. Yeah, um, yeah. So this is interesting. This is I, interesting. Yeah, but I never got any leads from them. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah. I thought they were going to provide and help me in my industry field, but I didn't get a lot of business at all. I think through through the first wave of COVID, I was fortunate enough to become part of the um, um, Ministry of Health Anxiety Relief Program. And so I was doing Zoom sessions, um, basically in my jammy pants, and um, yeah. like everybody else, it was on the other side of the screen, and um, just to help people there. Yeah, but yeah. as far as... Um, having people around and the rooms that I'm in there's three other tenants so if anything I think it was more company or more pleasantries in the hallway saying hi and bye because yeah, yeah, when you're yeah. in your clinic room you're basically focused and it's all pretty much you and your client yeah and it would have felt good being in, in a professional space and walking in having those other people offering those different things hey together yeah and there was also an element of safety there too um, which was quite nice because, you know, I was working some nights um, and still am, you know, where you have yeah. to organise your clients and working with all their times because not everybody can come during the day, especially with leave entitlements being sucked up with COVID now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you've got to work at um, 8.30 could be your last client. So you're not yeah, going to yeah. come until quite late. Yeah. yeah. And so with your with your business, you went from, so you did work within the, the weight loss stuff. But I know that over time you do the weight loss, but but you branched off into the anxiety, and now you're um, you're getting to a space where you're going to be one of the leading people around anxiety in New Zealand and techniques and things to use. How did you drift from from just working on the weight loss and coming in with a with a having experienced the gastric ban and drifting into how did you find your way towards anxiety and now and getting to a space where you're going to be leading the field and and that. I think I, I think I recognized pretty much early in the in the piece that everybody that was coming for weight, it was never about the weight. There was all yeah. this behind the scenes behaviors that may be driving that intensity of that emotion to go to those foods or so anxiety to me came a part of it. And I mean, often when you talk about anxiety, people sort of put it into a label category as the fact that, oh, anxiety, but Anxiety can also just mean general anxiety where you're anxious. Yeah. Um, people get anxious when they're wanting to lose weight and they hop on the scales and they haven't lost anything. And then that yeah. little inner critic comes in and starts being very unkind. Yeah. Um, so I started to recognize very early that emotions play a huge part. And um, that led me to going down the emotional side of it as opposed from just doing food and behaviors around food. Yeah, so yeah. tapping into the emotions, clearing the emotions, helping people. So they're coming for a weight program, but essentially when they walk out after that duration, they're sleeping better, their confidence, they've released a whole lot of stuff because 
when you think of sensory um, modulation type, we're born with these senses. So we're absorbing everything we hear, smell, see, taste. It's all going in and we release really little. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. really nice to see people just release all that tension and stress and gain back that control. Yeah, yeah. And with the um, with the going into anxiety, you, you ended up working over COVID with a health kind of response anxiety team, which is really cool having a hypnotherapist coming into that that space um mm -hmm. and so I, I know also you've even um gone gone one step further and and produced a book that's going out yeah the, so um the, uh, i've published my what we call my anxiety toolbox um yeah. which incorporates lots of tools um as i mentioned sensory modulation tools uh techniques to help people learn to discharge emotions and um so it has a lot in there and it sits across quite broadly across all areas of, of life and there's something in there that I think everyone can resonate with and I'm oh my gosh I'm so grateful it was never designed to sit on a shelf though in a bookstore yeah, um, yeah. because that's it's really not a look at me it's not about me it was about the fact that I'm so passionate about really change seeing people change and they do and they do and yeah, I've been yeah. so grateful I've got an organization that's basically I'm on my second print run um, so that's been delivered and, and dispatched out to the people that actually really need it. So, um, yeah. and I'm still expanding on that. So yeah, that's yeah. Different. So it's been it's been made actually to help people, not not as a something that can be bought and sold in a shop. It's actually been sent out to people that need it in the community through organisations, which I think is really awesome. Yeah, and I think that's important because. Um, that's what we do we're there to help people so if you can expand and take your knowledge and your skills and and I call it my toolbox and yeah. that's why we call it anxiety toolbox and the little it looks dark and it looks like a punchy cover but the main thing is it's about the number eight wire kiwi ingenuity that's why yeah. it was yeah. um, a wired head yeah 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 and yeah. going forward <laughs> yeah just so many other areas um i been asked to give a talk, um, belong to the Australian New Zealand Mental Health Association, part of the planning group here in Hamilton for um, our Mental Health Awareness Week. So I've been on that committee board. And I think it's really important if you get out in the community and um, you start to make those connections, your network, and then of course you become your brand basically. Yeah, yeah. So so speaking in, in, in there for people that are starting out, you have basically created a brand, but you've also gone into a, a field which is set around like the health, the health profession, you know, the health profession and the, the health board in New Zealand. So it's kind of stepping away from even the more natural therapy stuff, but actually getting in and, and sharing what could be considered, you know, hypnotic techniques into these more medical places. Mm. Um, you said about getting out and interacting with people. Is that something that you would recommend to newbies to actually get yeah, out? Yeah, I think for the newbies, it, it's really great to gain, gain your confidence. I mean, people are a little bit afraid of hypnotherapy um, um, for whatever they've seen or heard because it's lack of understanding, lack of education. And one way of actually sort of diffusing that is, is going out and running some mindfulness. But we all know that if we incorporate some of our hypnotic techniques into that there as well, um, people can actually have a better release and they feel those wonderful feelings, they feel lighter and of course they yeah. go away with a more positive um, thinking around what hypnotherapists and what we actually do. It's becoming more and more mainstream too, like here in the Waikato we've got hypnobirthing clinics, as you know, it's around the country, uh, it's becoming more um, accepted with pain, um, there's a lot more material coming through, but I think there's been a shift when it comes to the Ministry of Health and also Amazing the one. trust yeah. organisations in New Zealand because what we're seeing is it's all about um, her order, which is all about health. It's all about well-being and, and um, so mindfulness, wellness, wellness coaches um, and being accepted using the techniques that we are trained in are being yeah. well received. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So if you had any, what would any other tips be for these guys before we finish up? Yeah. Um, I think, I think for me, um, I probably wouldn't, if I look back now and reflect, even though you have to practice, I probably wouldn't have used family members, um, um, especially if you're really close to them because they like 
to, they see you differently. They are familiar with your tones. But I think if the ones that take away from that is it's about instilling the belief that you are the professional in your role. Yeah. But the main thing is, is when we do the pre-talk, the pre-talk is the most important aspect um, along with the techniques that you provide to help people once you've figured out what they're actually there for and how you can actually guide them and yeah. um, assist. I think you mentioned to me earlier that um, if you can just share that with these guys, um, when, when, they, when you do do the pre-talk, you really do say to them, look, I am good at what I do. And I think I've mentioned this to students before, um, how you actually step into that role, you know, yeah. and, and be the be the professional, eh? Because people are coming and they're nervous. They are really nervous. You can see it. Some of them are fidgeting around and they're nervous. Most people might want to go to relieve themselves and, the, and, the, and you know, because they're feeling a little bit uncomfortable and they want to be relaxed. So my primary role is to say, look, I'm not going to take the top of your head off and take some stuff out and put some stuff in. Um, my job here, my whole objective is to make sure you feel safe. Yeah. And then, of course, once we go through all of the aspects of our um, pre-talk session, and at the end of it, I've, I say this to everybody, and I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying, hey, you're really good at your job, aren't you? And they go, yeah. And then I turn around and say, without being arrogant, I'm extremely good at mine. And they just shift. Their body language changes, and it's like, it's like they've just given you the authority going, well, I'm in good hands, I'm safe. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and as Dave Alman says, the only thing that stops people going into to good levels of trance, even though we don't need those deep levels anymore, is fear, right? You know, nerves and, and stuff. And so as soon as they know that you are, you know, they, they are in safe hands and a session, of course, is going to be incredible yeah and we also got to look at it from our aspect too people could come to us for a weight session but we don't actually know their life mm. you know we don't know what has gone on um to the, to lead the person to sit there in front of us and they're coming for a weight program but as i said it's never really about the weight so we have to be quite cautious yeah. um and that's where they feel comfortable change work can happen yeah that's yeah and also ultimate belief and and the fact it's okay in the beginning, if you say something or you, I mean, I don't use scripts anymore, but I mean, I in the initially I did, you know, I used yeah. to read, I've now I've developed my own protocols, surgical hypnosis, um, so many other things, you know, um, the ball protocol, what I call hand closed drop, there's so many different techniques that you just, like I say, you come into your own, but if you make a little mistake, don't worry, just take a yeah. breath and then just push through and carry yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, um, and I know you do offer um, supervision mentoring and you do have a background in business as well. So prior to hypnotherapy, your, your work was in, in business management and things like that. So if people do want to contact you, how do they contact you? I know that you are a member, so um, if they jump on our website, they'll find you. Um, yeah, um, so business. But if they wanted to contact you, what's the best ways to get hold of you? So either my website, which uh, my company name is Hypno House, so it's www.hypnohouse.co.nz. You can Google my name, Jennifer Beck, that would come up as well. Yep. Or you can go on the HNZ website as a registered member on there. And of course, as you say, so I'm doing supervision for therapists, mentoring um, all aspects now. And quite frankly, we love our job. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Take care. Awesome. See you later. Bye.